final's over. Can I come out yet? Yeah, it's me, Reedy, who beat the first man. Unfortunately, it didn't come home, but guys and girls, let's wash away your Euros hangover. Beat the first man's back. Watch some top-class entertainment coming up today for you. Little shouty man makes a return. He's not been here for a few weeks. Ted has dropped the little Euros knob of the week, and he's upgraded, stroke downgraded the award. Stick around for that. Zooming in, we are joined by the boys from Arcade State to talk about their music and their love of Celtic Football Club. This intro could go on forever, but to be honest, let's just roll the titles. Do it now. So here we are then, episode 48 of our silly little show, and the show after the week before. So no forfeit for me, as you can see, with England missing out narrowly. Um, in Dad v Lad, you'll find out more about it, but I did hang it up. I made a little bit of an effort. Um, as always, if you are new to the show... Please click on the subscribe down below. A couple of little rules. We edit nothing. Whatever gets recorded first time stays in. I will make mistakes. That's one of the other little rules. The third little rule is we do like one of those. Now, last week, all you buggers watching it, obviously you decided you were far too excited for the Euros final and didn't bother clicking the like button. Either that or you thought it was shit. Lowest likes ever. Disappointed in you guys. Disappointed. So this week... Can we have a few more of those, please? And last but not least, don't forget to ring the little bell so you know, never, ever miss another episode again. I would hate for that to happen. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Let's get the newly adjusted helmet on, which can only mean one thing. It is Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police time. Shut up. Turn that off, we'll keep the helmet on. I got rid of the chin strap, it was giving me about 17 chins. I had more chins than a Chinese telephone directory. Anyway, so we've got some good news about Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police. So they have been accepted entry into the FA Vars as we discussed last week. And we said about how badly we were hoping to get a trip to Wembley in May next year. Beat the first man trip to Wembley, all dressed as coppers with our helmets on our heads, ready to sing the SGTP army songs and have a right old laugh of a day out. Well, the draw was made last week for the first qualifying round and uh, <laughs> you're not going to believe it. We got a bye. We're through to the second qualifying round. Wembley, Wembley. We're the famous SGTP and we're going to Wembley. Wembley. So, yes, we're through to the second qualifying round already. One step closer to Wembley without even kicking a ball. This tro this tournament's going to be a piece of piss if it's like this all the way through. What? What do you mean we've got to play games? Ah, OK. So, in the second qualifying round, oh, we've been drawn away. I mean, it's just a fix. They just don't want us to get there. So we're away to either Torpoint Athletic or Callington Town in the second qualifying round. Ties will be played on Saturday the 25th of September. That's the official bit. Um, that will form part of our new feature next season. There's, there's three trophies, stroke competitions, and they will form part of the new feature for next season called The Road to Wembley. Uh, I didn't just think that up. I, I knew I was doing it. The drumming on the helmet bit I made up. Anyway, but for now, it's... Tit off, I mean, sorry, helmet off, and on to our glorious feature that is how old. So, this week we head to the home of the European champions, Italy. Sorry, I've got to build it up somehow, I'm not doing it on purpose, it's not my fault. I'd already decided this bloke was going to be in the week before. So anyway, if you're new to the show, I will put up a picture of a footballer. All you have to do is guess how old he was when that photo was taken. It sounds very, very simple. It isn't very, very simple. In fact, it's bloody difficult most weeks. So uh, this week, we go to a man who first broke through at Monza, where he made 87 appearances before the big guns of AC Milan came calling, and he made the move to the San Siro. He had a fantastic spell with them. He played 145 times for uh, the red and blacks of AC Milan, and scoring 13 times before heading off to Cesena for a further 66 games. 
Uh, further little spells with Napoli and Roma on loan in Sue before he ended his career at Spa. He also made two appearances for the Blue of the Azzurri. Ironically, both come in at the Euro 1980 tournament held in Italy. So he did a bit, it's fair to say, but even better than that, he ended up getting his photo on here. So what we want to know is when this picture of Ruben Biriani was taken. How old was he? Answer to be revealed at the end of the show with Ted. So, little shouty man, here I am. So this is the point of the show where little shouty man is the only part that gets very, very few notes, to be honest. And I'll just have a little bit of a rant for about 60 seconds. So we've had all sorts on here, little shouty man. We've had the socks over the knees. We've had the bit of tape around the wrist for no apparent reason. I'm trying to think of some other ones. But this one, oh my God. Draft excluders at free kicks. What the actual bloody hell. Right, I've been watching football for 42 years. I could count on one hand, that's, that's five, if that times that a free kick has gone under the wall and into the net. Okay, the likelihood of a free kick being fired under the wall and into the net, I feel you've got more chance of me chipping one over a wall and into a net. No, because that wouldn't happen either. So, let's have a look at the draft excluders. He may well go under the wall. He may attempt to go under the wall. So there's two things. At the moment, they've got this man lying down. So if you don't know the draft excluder, basically you have a wall. There's a picture of it on the screen now. You have a wall with a man lying down behind the wall. The idea being that the wall can jump to cover the height. The man lying down blocks it going underneath. Right. We've already made it quite clear. Very few people go underneath. So it's a waste of a man. So here's a couple of little thoughts, you know, for the ingenious coaches out there. The set piece coaches. Apparently that's a thing. So... If there's four in the wall, now let's pretend that's the wall. Why don't this man and this man jump up high and this man and this man stay down low? OK, you could even mix up the four. That way, whoever's taking the free kick has got no idea who's jumping, who's staying low. So he can't go under the wall because the likelihood is that the one of the men will just boot it away. And if he goes over the wall, you've still got people giving a bit of height to head it away. So, one answer to the stupid draft excluder problem. Okay, so there's another one. Why not, God, God forbid, stand up behind the wall? So at the moment, the player lies down. As you've seen, there's a various couple of photos of players lying behind the, the, down behind the wall. So they either lie on their side or they lie on their front. When the ball breaks and play continues, they have to push themselves up off the ground and get up and start playing again. Why don't they just stand up? And if it goes under the wall, just put your foot out and stop it. And then, if they do decide to have a shot or they decide to chip it to the back post, you're on your feet, ready to play. Honestly, whoever thought of the draft excluder should, should face a lifetime ban from football. It's bloody ridiculous. What an utter waste of a man. Anyone that thinks I'm wrong, comment below and I will tell you why you're wrong. This one, I am 100% right. Little shouty man. On the money as he always is 100% he's never ever ever wrong and socks over the knees no no people are still doing it as well might have to have another rant at some stage anyway I can hear the little bear all right mate how are you Ted pissed off oh dear what's the matter mate well what's up bloody bastard in shit in penalties ah yes you threw your weight behind England last week, didn't you? Well, it wasn't fair, really. Did you see the size of that Donnarumma fella in goal? How were they supposed to put it past him? Ted, I mean, the first two managed it all right. It was the other three. Yes, yes, I'm well aware it was the other three that didn't put it in. That's why I'm so pissed off. OK, well, are you going to bring some of your much needed sarcasm and humour to the show? It's what people tune in for, let's face it. They don't tune in for me, according to you. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. To be honest, there's only one thing that can cheer me up, Reedy. Ah. Uh, is it what I think it is, Ted? Play Jimmy Bullard, Reedy. Go on, play Jimmy Bullard. OK, here's Jimmy Bullard. Oi, oi, it's the Bulldog. Massive congratulations to Stoke Gabriel and Torby, Pol Torby Police, sorry, Football Club on your merger.
What the bloody hell does that mean? Anyway, best wishes in particular to the youth section. The future's bright, people. Keep working hard, and I'm sure you'll go from strength to strength. Good luck. It's the Bulldog. Let's have it. Yeah. Still got no idea. So again, if you're new to the show, that was Jimmy Bullard talking about the Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police merger. Well, we think it was. Do you think that's what it was, Ted? Absolutely no clue. I don't speak drunk. No, me neither. So, Jimmy Bullard, we always bring it out when we all need a bit of cheering up. So, there's a bit of Jimmy in your life to cheer you up. So, Ted, let's cut to the chase. Have we got any, any nominations for this week's Euros Little Knob of the Week? Well, there was one nomination. Um, Chiellini for that challenge on Saka. Ah, oh, you what? You mean the one that's uh, beautifully gracing the thumbnail of the show this week? That's the one. How did you get your head in there? Don't know. Magic. Um, but why haven't we given it to Chiellini? Have you seen the size of Chiellini? Absolutely no way am I giving him a little knob of the week award. I agree, Ted. He is massive. So who have you given it to? So here it is, the little knob of the week. So who is getting the little knob of the week, Ted? No one. Get rid of it, Reedy. Really. Move it to one side. Oh, OK. I've moved it to one side, Ted. So, so what are we doing? Well, it's a collective and they will be crowned Euro wankers of the week. Ted, 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 Ted. Explain yourself, young bear. They are wankers. Absolute wankers. You explain it, really. I'm furious. Yes, yeah, so when England lost the penalty shootout and Rashford, Sancho, Backer missed the penalties, I think it's fair to say a vast majority of us sadly knew what was coming. And lo and behold, straight away that night and the next morning, all three players had been racially abused on social media. This is a subject that I've talked about on here before and how the social media companies need to do a lot more. This is a subject I'll continue to bang on about on here about so with social media companies. It's wrong. There's no need for it. It's pathetic. So the saddest thing about it all is we all knew it was going to happen. The minute Saka missed that penalty and they lost, you knew they were going to get racially abused. It didn't matter. It, you just knew that was what coming. Saka's even come out today and said when he missed it, he knew what was coming. He knew it was going to come. That is sadder almost than the fact that it, ha the fact it happens. Disgusting. It's absolutely despicable. The fact that we all knew it was coming just makes it somehow even worse. Um, but they're all, they're, they're, these were young lads. They're young. Saka was 19. Now, you can argue the toss about whether they were the right people to take the penalties or not, whether they should have stepped forward, whether they should have taken them differently. They went up and did what they thought was right in the heat of the moment, and they got it wrong. Did they try to miss the penalties? Of course they bloody didn't. They knew what was going to happen if they missed them. They tried to score those penalties with all their might. It just didn't happen. It was one of those things. When we go to work, we don't try to make mistakes, but we occasionally make them. But if I make a mistake at work, I don't expect to come home and find somebody's called me a, a, a white bastard on social media. It just wouldn't happen. It would be, it's ridiculous. So for these guys to be, oh, honestly, these keyboard warriors who genuinely have not got the bottle that those three lads have, never will have the bottle those three lads will have, says a lot. So Marcus Rashford, let's not forget what he did for the country earlier in the year. These wankers sitting at home dishing out the abuse wouldn't even know where to start other than feeding themselves. Jaden Sancho, Bakary Saka, this podcast, despite being run by a Scotsman, is 100% behind you and backs you all the way. And for you guys, I'm so sorry that you have had to put up with this shit yet again. And for that, the collective guys who did that on social media, and yes, a proportion came from abroad, which means they were probably just baiting, doesn't make it right. But five people have been arrested now in the UK for this. And uh, let's be honest, I hope they get absolutely slaughtered for it. I, they get, I know one's been sacked, which is fantastic. Let's hope all four get sacked. So. Have you finished really? Yes, I've finished. Thanks, Ted. Good. Can we get back to some light-hearted entertainment now? Why don't you get Kean on screen? Good idea, Ted. So for now, goodbye, Ted. We'll see you later on the show, yeah? It's not coming home. It's not coming home. Ted, I don't think they want to hear that, mate. Wrong time. Too soon. Too soon. So, Dad v Lad, the Euros, the final. So last week we went into the final with eight... Kean, a.k.a. Ladd, needed an absolute miracle to turn it around, including getting all the bonus points to win. Um, 
much more important for him was the England victory, which would mean a forfeit for me. Well, as you can see, there is no forfeit, just a shirt and an England shirt hanging up. But for now, let's head on over to Dad v Lad, the Euros, the final. So here we are then, Dad v Lad, the Euros. Kian, Kian, Kian. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Where's the enthusiasm and optimism of last week gone? Uh, it's, it's all gone now. It's all gone. It's all over. <laughs> so before we start, so obviously we had a forfeit. And you um, you came very prepared with a forfeit. You actually gave me this shirt to wear, which I would have yep. worn. I'm just proving to the viewers <laughs> I would have worn it. But as you, as you came so close, I'm, I'm going to go a bit of a halfway house. <laughs> so I'm not going to put it on because I don't have to. So if I don't have to, there's no way I'm going to. Yeah. I will. I'll put it up here. Hang it up. <laughs> for the rest of this and for the show on Saturday. Now, is that a deal? Right, there you go. Yeah, that's fine. Right, there you go. So there's an English <laughs> hanging up in the back of my podcast. I didn't have to wear it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> so uh, let's review our predictions from the, the weekend then. So obviously for the final, you went an England 1-0 win. After two minutes, you were looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I went for a 2-1 Italy win. And to be honest, after about 65 minutes, I was looking pretty good. Um, <laughs> but neither of us get a point because obviously it finished one all. So there's no points for us on that. Um, we then did first goal scorer. You went for Calvin Phillips rather optimistically. <laughs> uh, I sure. went for Chiro Mobile, uh, even more optimistically. He looked less <laughs> scoring than Phillips did. Um, so no points for each of us on that one. No. Um, last goal scorer, I went for Kane. Um, Again, even less optimistic than the others. <laughs> he looked less like scoring than Immobile. Yeah, he, for the whole tournament. Uh, and you had Phillips because you had one <laughs> score. So, yeah. points for us there. Uh, yellow cards. So, on 90 minutes, there were four yellow cards. <laughs> which I predicted four yellow yeah. cards. So, I do get what three did, points. If what it did it end on? Time, there was six. So, you still wouldn't have got any points. What did I say seven? You said seven, yeah. So, oh, quite close four, in the end, then. There was four after 90 minutes. So, <laughs> the official final score is Dad 25, Lad 13. Yeah, so I didn't think of very well. It's a bit of a spanking. I think <laughs> that you're, uh, you let your heart rule your head too much. Yeah, well, you know, we got to the final, so I kind of had to for the whole time. <laughs> Whereas so, it got it got to the knockouts and you didn't have anything like that. You could just pick who you thought was going to win. Well, exactly. I just I just played sensible. Right. So the other well, thing we've decided to do, we decided to give the general public the, uh, the 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 listening to our opinions, whether they want to listen to them or not, on who our <laughs> players of the tournaments were, and we decided to do one from our own nation and then one from the tournament itself. Uh, they may be the same person. I'm doubting it. But, uh, we'll probably see. not. So let's go with you first. So who was your um, who was your England player of the tournament and why? I, I couldn't pick between two of them. Yeah. So I've gone for Pickford and Sterling. Oh. But I couldn't pick between them. So it's kind of like a joint thing. Because I think Sterling, Sterling got a lot of stick from me as well, that he was even in the team. And then he kind of, if he didn't score his goals, he wouldn't have gone through. Mm. in the first place and then he played a big part in most of the knockout games as well and then Pickford when he was called upon most of the times he did what he needed to do yeah no, and I think got, especially in that, that. in that Germany game first 10 minutes I think he made a couple of saves where the defence was switched off and if they score early we might not go through in that game so Pickford had a 10 minute wobble against Denmark but other than that yeah, to be yeah. fair it's probably the best I've seen him play over the course of five yeah, or six yeah he was very games. good so yeah, no, so I can't argue that. It's quite ironic because I've got a joint player for player of the tournament. So I'm <laughs> glad you've gone for a joint as you're in yeah. So I'll do my Scotland player of the tournament. So we only had three games, but I've still got to choose whoever's. And for yeah. me, this man, he gets a lot of stick for his country, probably because he can't repeat his club form for his country because he's not playing with the same level of players. But Andy Robertson in this tournament was fantastic. He was yeah. a driving force. He drove us forward all the time. Every game, he was the one trying to get us on the front foot. The only negative I've got against him is his miss against the Czech Republic. <laughs> one nil up. But I can't hold yeah. that against him. He was, he was fantastic. By far, the best three games I've seen him have in a Scotland shirt. By far. Yeah. Um, if Gilmore had played against Croatia, 
he'd have had a shot because he was so good against <laughs> England. If he'd have played like that against Croatia, then he'd have had a shot because I think we would have gone through if he'd have played against Croatia. Yeah. Just saying. Um, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> um, right, so your player of the tournament then? Well, it's not like really a player of the tournament as such. Like okay. it's not who I thought was the best. It was kind of just like who really surprised me. Yeah. Because I've not seen much of him and I've gone for Pedro. Right, okay. Because he was really good every time I've seen him. And he's only, what is he, 18? Yeah. He's only 18 and he stepped up at like the top, top level. And he ran the game in the semi-final. And every time I saw Spain, he was their best player. So, gone for yeah, Pedro. He was, um, he was one of two players who, when Spain played their first game, I went, who's he? And almost yeah. everyone. I'd never heard of either of them before the tournament yeah. started. And both of them were like, they're good. Um, yeah, no, he had a great tournament for an 18 year old kid as well. It's, it was a quite an yeah. impressive tournament, it's got to be said. So, uh, no, I can't argue with that. It's a good decision. Um, I've got a joint player at a tournament, I couldn't split them. And when I tell you <laughs> who they are, it actually makes sense because you could click them together quite nicely as one player at a tournament. So, my first one is Spinat Zola. Yeah, magnificent, absolutely magnificent. Who thought he was going to have the tournament he had? And I think, yeah. you know, I think as Scotland fans, we thought we had the best left back in the world. I think England <laughs> fans started claiming that they had the best left back in the world after two good games. Um, but I think in reality, I think the Italians have got a man who is right up there, to be honest. He is yeah. absolutely monster. And you noticed how much Italy missed him when he was out of that side. Yeah, definitely. So I went for Spin at Zola as my first one. But as my joint one, now he didn't take his place. But he just seemed to start playing well after Spinazzola went out in. <laughs> so I've gone for Chiesa. Yeah, and he was very good. I think Chiesa, from the knockout stages on, was brilliant. Absolutely. That was brilliant. my other choice. But... And I think, to be honest, the tactical switch Mancini made in the final won them that game. I know it went to penalties, but I think that changed yeah. the game totally. When they put him on Kyle Walker, it meant that Carl Walker couldn't go in covering the centre-backs because he had to yeah. stay out and look after Chiesa. And all of a sudden, there was holes opening up in the middle, which Insignia just dropped into. And suddenly, they were picking passes and it was just causing you no end of problems. Yeah. But um, but for me, Chiesa, wow. I mean, when he went off, I think there was a huge sigh of relief around the country when he yeah. went off injured. Because I think if he had stayed on, I'm not convinced it would have gone to penalties. No, I probably he, not. He was having a lot of success down that left hand. Oh, to be honest, I'd probably rather he scored than it went to penalties. But well, yeah, there may be. That, <laughs> I think you've got to look at. If you'd have said to you at the start of the tournament, you'd have got all the way to the final, you'd have ripped your arm off for that. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know it's, it's four days on now, and yeah, it was crushing disappointment. But I think if you'd have said at the start of the tournament, you'll get to the final, you'll beat Germany on the way. I think yeah. you'd, have, you'd have taken that. So, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, there's only, what, one, two, there's only three teams you fail to beat. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, oh, I knew that was coming no, at some point. You're never going to live that down. <laughs> yeah, we got to the final, it's all right. It's the only point you got. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So, Dad v. Lad, we've had some compliments, Key. Now, this is quite unusual. We? <laughs> yeah, we've had, we've had a, a, somebody's emailed me and said he loves two parts of the show. He loves Dad v. Lad. And he loves another part of the show, which I'll, I'll reveal yeah. on Saturday. But he loves Dad v. Lad. So I thought, we can't just let Dad v. Lad die <laughs> after the Euros. It's been too good. It's been too much fun. So we've had a little chat and we've decided we're going to do Dad v. Lad, the Fantasy League, next year. Yeah. So quite simply, we will come on here each week with our team selections, which means I've actually got to remember to pick a fantasy team. Um, <laughs> and we will weigh up our teams and see how we go and through the season, how many points we get. And what we're going to do is yep. every now and then we're going to invite a guest on. So if you fancy coming on our fantasy uh, fantasy <laughs> slot in the programme, it may even become a Beat the First Man spin-off programme. You never know. <laughs> it could be a new thing. Um, then let us know. Drop us an email, a message on Twitter or whatever and you can come on. It'll be Dad v. Lad the Fantasy, but we'll have guest people coming on with their teams as well. Um, so it'll be a bit of a laugh. It all starts on August the 14th. How much are you looking forward to that first game of the season? <laughs> Come on, lose your enthusiasm for football right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Man United away, think... don't get any better than that. I'll call them by their proper name as it's a football game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so the final score in Dad v Lad the Euros then was Dad 25, Lad 13. So you have yeah. to get your own back in uh, Dad v Lad the Fantasy League. <laughs> 
I was good at fantasy last year. To I was going to say, judging by last year's fantasy league results, <laughs> I don't think you're going to have too much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Key, for now, thank you very much, mate. See you, mate. I'll leave the shirt up there for Saturday's <laughs> show. So that'll be your little tribute for Saturday's sure. show. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you, mate. So there we go. I did make that bit of an effort with the England shirt. It will hang up there for the rest of the show uh, to make him feel a little bit better. But much more importantly than that, it was a very comprehensive victory for Dad. So as you've heard, we are going to do Fantasy Football Dad v Lad through the season, which will also involve getting guests on every now and then. So it might be that we invite a guest on to try and beat us for the week with their team. So it will, it will take shape for it as the season goes on. Just one of the many new features for next season as the show has a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a twist next season, as a bit of a change for next year. So Premier League managers, it's a knockout, the final. So here it is, the last two from 20 Premier League managers. We whittled it down to just two. And it was a case of who comes out on top between Marcelo Bielsa and Brendan Rodgers. What did it boil down to? Tactics? Nah. Team selections? Nah. Trophies won? Nah. Should we carry on doing this? Nah. Uh, it went down to a 100 metre running race between the two. So it went out, as I said last week, it was the polls on social media, five Twitter messages, five Facebook messages, and it was one point for each with the winner sealing it. So, drum roll, please. That's just fingers on the desk. I appreciate that, but what am I supposed to do? I don't have a drum and I'm not a drummer. So, in the polls, I can exclusively reveal by three votes, Brendan Rogers was the winner. One nil to Brendan Rogers. In the Facebook messages, random people selected, I can exclusively reveal by one vote, Marcelo Bielsa was the winner. Rogers won, Bielsa won. It all comes down to the Twitter messages. And now I can reveal by a score of three to two on the Twitter messages, the winner and your Premier League managers, it's a knockout champion is... Brendan Rogers. So well done to Brendan Rogers. Congratulations on your victory. You will win a big um, blow up outfit because that's what they used to wear on It's a Knockout. So for one last time, let's see you all joining in. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Even Ted joined in. I hope you did too. So. What's that? Hang on. The name game. Yeah, there we go. The jingle's back, which brings us to the beautiful part of the show. Who can forget this man? Our Jellico Fox from last week. That's what this show's all about. So this week, it's a man who started out as a youth footballer at Chelsea before ending up in non-league at Welling United. A couple of short spells with other clubs and he moved to Dover Athletic where he did clock up 67 appearances in just under three seasons before making a move up to Chorley, a bit further north. Clearly, he decided Chorley wasn't far enough north-north, so he went further north and he went to join Queen of the South at Palmerston Park to play in the Scottish Championship. And that's where he still resides. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the winner of this week's name game. It is Naughty Naughty. Right. So we've had a couple of sensible weeks where all we've done is shown the picture of the player because we had our Jellico Fox and we had the other fella's name I can't remember. Um, nah, it's gone. But our Jellico Fox, basically, we didn't have a picture of Fox because it wouldn't have gone down well. So, naughty, naughty, and we put up a picture of the shaman because he went naughty, naughty in the video as well. So can we please get it right? Quick with the cheap gags. Here's naughty, naughty. There you go. It's a real man. Naughty, naughty. So be sure to tune in next week for another classically named footballer. Now, the dream. And this is where you lot can help me. I want to get Naughty Naughty or our Jellico Fox on a Zoom call. So get after them on social media, on Twitter, anything. Bombard them. See if you can get them to come on. Please tag me in it. Tag them in it. Get on it. Let's see if we can get... I think Naughty Naughty is probably more realistic than our Jellico Fox. So go after Naughty Naughty. We want Naughty Naughty on the show. And we can have the shaman in the background. It'd be brilliant. Anyway, so this week we brought back Zooming in. We've had a couple of weeks where we, we 
a couple of weeks without one, but this week zooming in was back with a vengeance again. We were joined by the Scottish band Arcade State as we discussed their music, of course, as well as their love of Glasgow Celtic. Uh, it was a good old laugh with this one, trust me. And listen out for their answer on either or in terms of collaborating with an artist. Very amusing and not what I expected and not what we've had before. Um, so after the chat, there will be a clip of their song Follow. So sit down, get comfortable and here's Zooming In with Arcade State. Zooming in on the podcast, delighted to say this week we are joined by three members of the band Arcade State. We have Andy, lead guitarist, Claire, lead vocals and Jordan, drummer. How are you all, gents? Absolutely, good, good. Good. Thanks for having us on. Oh, no problem. And Jordan, uh, without wanting to stereotype drummer, if ever a man looked like a drummer, you are a man who looks like a drummer. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly then. <laughs> shocking, eh? <laughs> the early starting one. Um, so there will be people out there who haven't heard of Arcade State. So, get gents, the sales floor is yours. Tell us all about you, what you're about, what's your music about, and, uh, yeah, the sales floor is yours. Kieran? Uh, so, we are an alternative rock band for Glasgow. Who uh, We've only been a band for two two years, but this the lineup we've currently got has only been together about a year. So... I uh, our music's pretty much just I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just uh, about love and uh, we write a lot about uh, like mental health and stuff as well. So, well, I, as you know, if you've watched any of my shows before, I'm a, a very much a musical expert, and I only go to on music as I compare bands to other bands that I've heard. So, here we go, drum roll. This is the best I could come up with to compare you to. So, I think the closest I could come was a bit of a mellower Kings of Leon. Uh, oh, wow. that's, that's, that's kind of what I say to people if, if they ask, what would these sound like? I say, well, kind of Kings of Leon. Uh, less, of, less American. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely less American. But, yeah, and that was it. I mean, you know, I mean, I've listened to probably three or four of your tracks and I was lucky enough to get a, a, a sneak preview of the new one coming up and I have to say they're all very different but they're all very unique to you guys and you can once you've heard one or two of them you can straight away you know the other two of yours if that sounds if that makes sense yeah that's, uh, that's what yeah. we tried that's what we tried to do innit so no it's all, it's all good so the new single I mean, I say, I was lucky enough to be one of the few to have listened to it prior to it being released. It's an absolute, I would say it's the best of the ones I've listened to of all of yours by, by a mile. And that's not being disrespectful to other stuff, but this is seriously, seriously good stuff. So when are, uh, when are the general public going to be lucky enough to be able to A, listen to it and B, start downloading it? Uh, from, in the next, hopefully in the next two months. Two months. But we've, uh, but we've got, We've got like uh, music videos and stuff like that to sort for it. So once we've got all that sorted, then we can we can get it out. And how excited are you for the new for the new single? Because I say I think it really is. It's it's another step up from you boys. I really do genuinely mean it. I agree with that. that like, aye. we we think it's a step up as well for us. Yeah. I think you can you can tell where you, I know you said obviously you've only been abandoned this current set, but you can you can almost hear it going through your tunes. Are like you just stepping up and up and up? And this one, where you, so the other ones are sort of gradual step. This one is just a, a leap. It really is. It's that I think it's that good. This is um, I think people are going to love it. I think people will be all over it the minute they hear it. Thank you very much. So unlucky yes. public, I've heard it already, and it's very good. You'll have to wait. <laughs> 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 well, um, on the social media, a couple of in my bit a couple of weeks ago, you were meeting plans of uh, coming south of the border to uh, to do a little bit of a mini tour. How are things developing with that? Or is it still just sort of a, a, a pipeline idea at the moment? Or yeah, it's, it's still it's still in the pipeline, but hopefully we can hopefully we can sort it and we can get out and play some shows. Yeah, and have you got any shows lined up at the moment, even north of the border, or any any lined up at all? We are currently booked in to play 
three shows in August. So we've got um, Edinburgh, Bathgate and Glasgow, uh, three nights in a row. So we've got that in August. It's the 26th, the 27th and 28th of August. And Glasgow sold out. Yep. Excellent work. And, uh, and Mrs Sturgeon hasn't put any scuppers on the plan today with her announcement. It's all, all got the green light. All right. All, all, all good, so I think. Uh, yeah, thank you, right. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. I mean, we just, I'll just by the gut of had the DMAs cancelled because uh, they can't get out of Australia, which is the more frustrating than anything else. We're allowed to have it over here, but they can't get out of us. So that's been put back to November. It's only the third time it's been put back, but hey. Um, DMAs are brilliant. Oh, I can't wait. Genuinely, we've had it booked now for, oh, it's got to be a year now, and it's been, so it's been rescheduled three times, but hopefully, touch wood this time, it'll be the, uh, it'll be the one. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, so, I like to do an either or when we go into the football, but I've switched it up a bit recently, and now we're doing an either or with music. So, you can have one each. Which musical artist, dead or alive, would you like to collaborate with as a band? Cut Cabin. Yeah. Uh, I'd say Johnny Mark for the Smiths. Choices, good choices. Um, see ya. Interesting. She's a mixed bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it is a mixed bag. I mean, I'm looking forward to hearing these collabs. So, <laughs> but now you get the eye of the So you can collaborate with them. Even Kirkabay will bring him back. Um, but you have to fold the band the day after, or you don't collaborate with them, but you carry on playing as you are. Ah, uh, we are we are gone. We are about as deep as Cuff Cobain. Cuff Cobain, then. Yeah, yeah. Stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll sell out the show, to be fair. <laughs> 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 so we'll move on, move on to your football then, and I know all three of you are massive Celtic fans, um, unbelievably, and I, I genuinely, did, I knew it was pretty soon but your season kicks off in a week's time with a Champions League qualifier against Midgetland which is just ridiculous I know they're not really called Midgetland but you can't call them anything different ah, uh, called Midgetland <laughs> <laughs> I hope um, just hammers out you guys from the <laughs> <laughs> you got to go the long ball game yeah <laughs> so um, Ange Postacoglu then as the new boss what are your thoughts aye man i, I... I, was, I don't know a lot about him, but uh, I'm willing to obviously give him a chance. He can't do any yeah. worse than last season, eh? No. I, no. I think I've seen I a think, few videos of his training sessions and that, and he does. I think his, his logic and his philosophy it seems good so far, so but time will tell. All right. Wait until he loses the first game and then everybody's done his back. <laughs> <laughs> a one all draw with Midgetland at home, that'll be it. Call it for, <laughs> call it for <laughs> a <next> game. <day. laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I controversially, I mean, I know there was a lot of talk about Eddie Howe and people were really after Eddie Howe. I think we've got a much better choice with this fella than Eddie Howe. I, Eddie Howe would have crumbled up there. And I, you know, a lot of people don't understand the glass. The, the goldfish bowl of Glasgow and, and Celtic and Rangers and think oh, it's a farmers league blah 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 the usual shit that I get down here um, but the reality okay. is like you, you nailed it then exactly if he draws the first game he's under pressure and Eddie Howe would not have coped with that pressure I'm absolutely convinced that I think although it's a bit more of an out there choice and I must admit I didn't know a lot about him I genuinely think looking at his CV and his character and the way he's dealt with things in the part I think he'll handle the job a lot better than Eddie Howe would have done. Yeah. Definitely. I think yeah. he's uh, attack he's attack minded, so I think that's the way Celtic needs yeah. to play. Yeah. Get the ball, go forward, to score goals. Yeah, well, that's what that's what you guys have always been about. That's been your club's philosophy for years. And then all of a sudden exactly. last year, uh, for whatever reason, Lennon tried to play a much more pragmatic game, which was just not what you I mean, he just wants to be grateful the stadiums were empty. I don't even know what happened, yeah. man. I think I think a Rangers fan wrote wrote last season. <laughs> absolutely cost us. It was pretty desperate. It was comical. It was absolutely <laughs> comical. So what are your expectations ahead of the new season? Obviously last season was a massive disappointment, as you said. What are your expectations going into the new season? I will win the, the league. 
confident talking. I won in the league. I won in the league, man. That's, that's, that's very confident talking. <laughs> so what was it? So you lost it by how many points was it? Was it twenty in the end? Or was it less than that? Hi, it was a bit. It was between. It was between sixteen and twenty-three. Yeah. Twenty-three, I think it was. And you've got, you've probably got quite a big squad overhaul to happen as well. Do you? Are you, are you, are you anybody? Huh? That's the worry. Don't the worry. anybody. I mean, yeah. That would that be my concern. He's got, he's got to bring in an awful lot of players very quickly. I think to to get it running the way you want it to be running from day one and like we said the first game is next week and there's, there's literally nobody in the door uh, we need to sign before I can't remember when the deadline is to register them for the Champions League the first round so I don't think that's going to happen yeah but like you said it's, it's only a team of midgets running around the pitch anyway so you don't have any problem <laughs> whatsoever it's going to be an absolute piece of piss just loads of six <laughs> players knock it long job done <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll still concede for a corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, talk, the, the rivalry between yourselves and your, your neighbours from across the city is, is well known. We don't need to go into that. But genuinely, obviously, you had those two or three seasons where they were out of the top flight and you didn't really have a challenge. Aberdeen sort of flitted, they flirted with a challenge for uh, three or four weeks of one season. How much better is it to have them back giving you that challenge, even though it means that last season ended up being the way it was? Yeah, it's brilliant. It makes it worthwhile. I think it just makes it better. Yeah. I think everybody just loves the, I don't know, the passion was kind of away for a, a wee while. It was just like, we should be winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now we're at the stage where we might not win. Makes it a wee bit more exciting. I'm going to be a little bit controversial. Do you think Rogers? knew they were coming up and jumped chip before they got up. I don't think Rogers <laughs> He just, uh, he'd won everything, hadn't he? Yeah. Celtic, yeah. So, I don't know, like, the only reason he would stay would be the 10 in a row, but, nah, he's away, he's gone, so... I know, I, I live in Leicester, I have, hear, I have to hear about him every week, I live in Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a great, he's a great manager right enough, yeah, he's done, he's, to be fair to him he's done a lot better down here than I thought he would do with Leicester he really has he's you know he's taken them on another level again and um, be interesting to see how they go this year because there's a few now are beginning to age a little bit in that Leicester side so be I interesting to see how he, uh, how he copes this year he's bowled it twice now for the fourth yeah, but don't don't mention that around here. They get very upset. <laughs> Not that we mention ever. Um, so obviously there will be one massive void at Salty Park this year. The number eight Scott Brown has moved on. How weird is it going to be seeing him coming back wearing the red shirt of Aberdeen and uh, kicking lumps out of your own players rather than out of everybody else's? Strange. <laughs> He's already Even wearing all these for Aberdeen. Ah, uh, they've changed him. What sort of reception is he going to get? I mean, he's going to get, surely he's going to get a massive reception when he returns because he never got the goodbye, did he? So he's going to get a huge reception when he comes back. Nah, he's getting booed. Oh, he's, 100%. <laughs> no, no. He's going to get a great reception, obviously, isn't he? Uh, he's been brilliant for Celtic. Obviously, he's had these the past couple of seasons, he's, his legs are maybe not as good as he used to be, but. Aye, he's been brilliant for Celtic. There's no denying that. No, nah, he's been he's been a leader at your club and the one hundred percent and I think, you know, the way he handles himself on and off the pitch, ninety nine percent of the time he's been fantastic. And I think, you know, like you said, you're bo- you're booing because that's what we do as football fans. This you know, that's just the nature of the beast. I'm a Leeds fan, we've got Man United first game of the season. You know Marcus Ratchford's gonna get a load of shit for missing a penalty. It's inevitable. Oh, no. And it won't be that it'll just purely be because of the fact that he missed a penalty, it'll be nothing to do with oh, any I can't of the believe shit. how crazy that is, by the way. Oh yeah. honestly. Oh, I'm, I'm going, going. Well, on this week's show, I'm gonna rant about it. I've ranted about it once before, I'm gonna rant about it again because it really the, nothing gets my shit more than that. And it's just pathetic. You know, oh, the, it's shocking. It's just oh it's fucking it's unbelievable. It really is. And the, the only thing that was less surprising is the fact that we all knew it was going to happen. As soon as they missed them, you knew what was coming. And that's what that's what really is is just it's it's upsetting and you feel for him. I mean, Saka's nineteen. Fucking nineteen years old. It's like, you know, he's a kid. 
I can't believe we took the fifth yeah. penalty. Well, that, that alone was, was bizarre. But anyway, moving swiftly on before we go down that route. Uh, favourite player ever at Celtic? Not necessarily your best one, just your favourite one. The one that if you was in the playground, you'd want to be right now. Oh, Henrik Larson. Henrik Larson. Absolutely. Yeah, it's hard to disagree. I and mean, the man was just a goal scoring machine, wasn't he? He was just fantastic. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just and I think people just don't give him credit because his work rate was phenomenal. The, the boy never stopped running. I mean, I'm a Leeds fan. Yeah. You probably, I mean, I'm sure you've seen how we play under Bielsa. Larson would have absolutely suited that team to a absolute right. dream because he'd have chased oh, them for oh, he'd have just he'd have just he'd have run after everything and chased everything and he'd have scored goals he'd have been an absolute perfect fit for that side and for you boys he was just yeah. sensational that that year when you went to the UEFA yeah. Cup final and he was I mean he was just incredible wasn't he aye, 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 that was brilliant yeah. two goals and we still got beat man oh, I know. <laughs> The Las Mourinho team scored three as well. That's even more incredible. I know. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Fucking <Dirty. deli>. <laughs> <laughs> So, on the flip side, the worst player you've ever seen? Uh, Raphael Shite. <laughs> the beautiful name, Raphael Shite. <laughs> 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 Joe Ingbergit was pretty bad for us, but then he absolutely ripped us apart. Oh, my <laughs> God. Played for Malmo. The Champions League. Aye. He was, he was scored two, did he know? Aye. Did we not score quite early in that game, or no? Aye, straight away. Oh, God, and then he hammered us. Chris Killen as well. He was pretty bad. That's a name. Andy? Eh, uh, I don't know. Oh, I want to spring a mind Shane Duffy, man, but you, I've also no surprise. Oh, I, 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 that, that is a good point. <laughs> it didn't quite work out, did it? It's fair to say. He was wearing ice skates, man, on it. <laughs> uh, right, so you can have an either or for football. Right, so you can only have one of the two, but you have to choose one. So... You win the league, but Rangers will win either the Champions League or the Europa League if they drop out of one into the other. Or you finish second in the league to them, but they tumble out of both of those in the first round. I'll take the league. All day long. All day long. Europa League. It it means them winning a European trophy. I know. I'm sorry, we've done it. I don't think I could handle that. Nah. Uh, so you'll go for second then Andy I'll go for second I couldn't handle it it's that bad <laughs> oh dear love it <laughs> just to watch them tumble out to some shite team in the first round <laughs> I just I also I kind of couldn't handle it when our European Cup oh, <laughs> Right, gents, the bit that every most car artist I've ever had on here loves, they get to play football manager, full hole, five-a-side team, simple rules, one goalkeeper, one defender, two midfielders, one striker. You have to have seen them play live, and the only other rule, as a band, is only one team between the band. So let's start with your goalkeeper. Who are we going for between the sticks? Hey, Andy, you the goalkeeper. So, I, Edwin van der Sar, saw him... Uh, Early 2000 against Clyde in a friendly. Yeah. So, I have a wee cheeky one for you. Yeah, win Van Den. See, I, I, I heard you nailed on to pick Fraser Forster and you've gone Van der Sar. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did have Fraser Forster, but Andy's seen Edwin Van der Sar, so I've got to give him that one. <laughs> He's out for Edwin Forster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to confidently pick your centre-back and I'll be amazed if you've not picked him as your centre-back because every Celtic and every Liverpool fan I've had on this show has picked him as their centre-back. Surely it's big Virgil. Uh, no, it's Raphael Shea. <laughs> 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 Virgil, Virgil van Dijk. <laughs> so, you boys watch... Obviously, so let's, obviously, there will be Liverpool fans that watch this on here who have just watched in the Premier League and think they've signed this player from Southampton who's amazing. He was at Celtic for two seasons, three seasons. Two. I think it was when, two, wasn't it? 
Was it free? I don't know. No. So that sure, first sure. season he, he came, when you first saw him, how good was he in that first season? Or did you watch him grow as a player over the course of the sort of two, three seasons? Or straight away, did you just think, Jesus Christ, what have we got on our hands here? I think you he could tell he was good straight away, but Aye, straight he did away. grow as well. But he did grow into a better player, but straight away you could see the guy was just absolute class on a different yeah. level. Yeah. I mean, he's just... He's just a machine of a man, an absolute. I mean, he's just a unit, and you, you only got to look at Liverpool this year and just see the void that is left behind with them not being in there, and their defence has just been Aye. creaky all season. Um, he took um, he took three kicks for us, didn't he? Aye, aye. <laughs> I think the only goal he kicked for was it was it half a was it half an hour two two fifty? I think the only got him for anyway. Was it really? Was yeah, I'm sure it was. Uh, something it was, penny. Penny. It was, it was, it was aye. So when you look at them now, what is it? What is it? Seventy-five million. So yeah, I mean that's what, went, that's what he went for then. Well, I mean if they were to decide to sell him now, Jesus Christ, you'd be yeah. you'd be up in the high hundreds for definite. So right. easy. But uh, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm not surprised. To, uh, not the first. You won't be the last. I think he's probably the most picked player in five sides on here in forty-eight episodes. I would suggest. So it's um, that says a lot about him as a player. I would I would think. So first, it was him or Tierney. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, give, give it another two, two or three years. I think Tyler will be in a lot more sides than he's in now. Yeah. Because I think he'll move on from Arsenal. He'll go. He'll go bigger than Arsenal, definitely. So, so first of you, first of, mid, first of your midfielders. Uh, Stan Petrov. No, no, no. <laughs> Nakamura. Was it Naka? Mm-hmm. Nakamura. Nakamura. Right, now, there will be people, believe it or not, south of the border who won't know a lot about Nakamura. They'll probably remember his free kick against Man United because that's what most Please. people... Yeah, right, which we'll remember for. But what did Nakamura give that makes him stand out above all those other midfielders you've had since you've been watching Celtic? Technique. Oh, his technique was unbelievable. Everything, everything he'd done, his first touch, he just control. Everything was just a, a cut above everybody else. Remember that goal against so Rangers? Good technically. Oh, I swear yeah. man. Oof. Oh, my God. What I a goal. About 40 yards. Aye, unbelievable. Yeah, can't get one in the league, I know. Aye, I guess, uh, Kelly. Kelly, yeah. Uh... Yeah, he was, a, he was a class act. And I said, I mean, the goals, the goals that beat Man, so he got the one at Celtic Park, which beat them, didn't he? And the one at Old Trafford, right. I think, did, did you draw the one at Old Trafford when he scored? Or was one that each. One each, yeah. So, I mean, they were uh, both... Yeah. If Beckham had scored him, they'd have been absolutely played over and over and over again. Um, Aye. Honestly, if you're if you're a youngster watching this and you probably don't know who Nakamura is, and I'm not saying you boys are old for a second, but go and just go on YouTube Nakamura for Celtic, and honestly, sit down, get yourself a, get yourself a drink, and just watch a load of free kicks fizzing in the top corner because the man was sensational at free kicks, absolutely unbelievable. So right, so. I'm presuming you're going to put a hard-working tackling midfielder alongside him because the one thing he didn't do a lot of was he didn't do a lot of tackling. Uh, <laughs> no, we're no. Oh, okay. We've, Flamboyant. Attack. We've, we've went for somebody that uh, doesn't play for Celtic, but we, me and Kieran have seen him play, and it's Kaka. Right, okay. He's at East Team Milan. Yeah. And the, the guy is absolutely unbelievable. I think he was playing with slippers on. <laughs> I think he was unreal. <laughs> He was so good. He, injuries aside, if if he hadn't have got injured, how good do you think he could have gone on to be? Because he just suffered with injuries at the wrong times. Every time he seemed to get going, he just seemed to get injured again and it just seemed to hold him back. How good do you think he could genuinely have been? Definitely. Yeah, well, the the, I think. I, well, when the ball on the old man, so I wouldn't have put it past him if... Get another one under his belt anyway. Yeah, I definitely want a few of them. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a, he was a top top player, and yeah, any Brazilian player has only got four letters in his surname. They have to be good. <laughs> You've got to be good for four letters in your surname. That's why I, when I become Brazilian, it'll just say Reed, nothing else. <laughs> a part for Fred though oh yeah I, Fred, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean they even stitched him up and gave him a shit with his name <laughs> at, at one point there was somebody there was Fred and Joe playing up front for Brazil they did have Joe yeah he only had two letters as well didn't he I know Fred and Joe <laughs> 
<laughs> Fantastic. All right, we'll take Kaka. That's that's not that's quite an impressive side so far. So uh, you probably might have given away your striker earlier on with your favourite player, but who are you going as uh, as your striker? Yeah, I had it easy. So obviously we've spoken about him earlier on, but when a player like that leaves, so you had him for I, mean, I can't remember how many years you had him for. It must have been six, seven, seven seasons. Yeah, seven years. So seven years. when he leaves. How did you feel the day you found out that was it? He was gone. He was never playing in the hoops again. I was green. I uh, man, it was so <laughs> devastating. <laughs> I was gutted when he cut his dreadlocks. Never mind. The- <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, and people don't. When you get so bought into your club and you buy into people as individual, and they always say, "Don't get attached to an individual within a club." You can't help it. You genuinely can't. I mean, we, we're the same at Leeds with Bielsa. I can't even think about the day that man goes because I will be here and I'll be like, yeah, I'll be sat in the corner of the room sobbing the day he goes. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be devastating. It's literally going to be devastating. And I feel so sorry for the bloke who's coming in after him because he's got no chance. Just come in and resign. Oh, Do a Brian Clough. Uh, I think you were happy really to see like where he went on. Where he went on to, but after Celtic as well, it was good to see obviously what he achieved and things. So, Champions happy in that kind of regards, but it was brutal at the time. You didn't want scored against yeah. some man, you didn't he? Up two goals in the Champions League final as well. Aye, yeah, so one, he won the Champions League from basically. He won, he won yeah. them, he won them the Champions League. Aye, aye, therefore. So, and past to Belletti. he's coaching now as well. Do you hope upon hope that one day he gets to? Top levels that you can then come across and manage yourselves? No, because no, I don't want to hate him. <laughs> I don't want him to feel. No, I get that. Totally, totally get that. And uh, I think, yeah, I can only compare it to us. And when Gary Speed was linked with our job before he sadly took us over, but I genuinely did not want him to come back as manager because I loved him as a player. Oh, and I'd have been yeah. gutted with it. I mean, Gary Lack. Gary McAllister was the classic example of somebody came back as a manager and it didn't work out and you were like his legacy that he left as a player had just gone downhill as a manager which sadly but uh, but uh, yeah so um, that's not a bad side boys I've got to say it's going to score some goals uh, I might I might concede a few goals as well but well, yeah, yeah. you've got Virgil, you've got Virgil and you've got, um, Van der Sar in a five a side goal he ain't going to let many in he's a big lad exactly <laughs> <laughs> So if I was lucky enough to let you have one sub out of all the ones who just missed out, who would you have on your bench? You can have one each. Petrov, Petrov, Petrov So what Petrov, was I, like you. I mean, Petrov done brilliant when he came down here to Villa as well. He done very well north the border, very well down here as well. Obviously then got his illness, which sadly forced him to retire. Um, he was in the side with... Larson, Nakamura, what did he bring to the team that, that they perhaps didn't? Oh, like, I don't know, man. Like He just had the passion and the desire that Petrov had was just... I, just, I don't know, Iron man. lungs, man. Just, he, he, he finished up running. Yeah. He was so fit he as had, well. He had some size arse as well, just like John McGinn. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I just pull out. This is the third time on these podcasts that John McGinn's ass has been mentioned. I, I think I might change it. I might change the name of it to John McGinn's ass. Is that correct? Gents, that's been superb. So, just rewinding for those who didn't catch it at the start. When can they see you performing live in August and where? So we are playing Edinburgh. Bathgate in Glasgow on the 26th, 27th and 28th of August but Glasgow sold it so you can't get tickets but there's still tickets remaining for Bathgate in Edinburgh Right, so people, if you're watching these guys and you're in the area, get a ticket, go and see them. They've not been able to perform live for ages due to lockdowns, etc. They produce wicked music. If you like the Kings of Leon, trust me, you'll love them. If you don't like the Kings of Leon, you might still love them. After this uh, chat that we've had, there is going to be a clip of their single Follow, which I've put together a beautifully mastered video. Wow, I've stuck some photos over the top of the music because I'm no editing expert. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a good tune, so go and have a listen to it. Go and follow them on Spotify. Go and do all the things you need to do with a music artist. Gents, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. I hope all three gigs sell out. 
And uh, I look forward to the uh, the general public or the minions, as I like to call them, because they've not heard it, and I have uh, listening to your new single. <laughs> so, yes, man. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. There we go then. Good lads, weren't they? They were good lads. And yeah, fold the band, not asked. Once they've had the collaboration, ah, we're out of here. So uh, go, why not head on over, do what their song says, follow them on Spotify or whatever musical playlist that you use. Um, download their songs, get behind the guys. They were, they were good lads. And honestly, keep your eyes and ears out for their new single. Follow them on social media so you don't miss it because it is absolutely brilliant. And trust me, I know I say that all people's songs are good, but genuinely, this is an absolute belter. Uh, next week on Zooming In, I'm very, very pleased to say we've got a band called Greedy Soul coming on. One Arsenal fan, one Tottenham fan, possibly one West Ham fan. More excitedly than that, a certain radio DJ has said they are the best he has heard since Oasis. High praise indeed. And they're coming on our silly little show. So, look forward to them next week. So, time for our friend Ted which can only mean one thing. So, Ted, you're feeling a bit happier now? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. It'll be the Qatar World Cup soon. Bring it on. Yeah, next year, Ted, around Christmas time. Bugger that, then. I'll be out partying. And when I'll be at home, I'll be watching Elf. Right, OK. Anyway, the reason you're back is it's time to reveal the age of uh, Ruben Buriani. Reedy, is he a curry? No, Ted. Ruben Buriani is not a curry. He's an Italian footballer, and that's just rude. He does sound like a curry, a nice Reuben Buriani with naan bread. Sounds amazing. Ted, right, now, it's time for the real-life public guesses for you, then. Lies. OK, let's start with the real-life public guesses. The first one, Luke from Manchester. Hang on, Reedy, that didn't rhyme. No, of course it didn't rhyme, Red. I, Ted, I told you that has purely been a coincidence. These are real people with real guesses. Bullshit. No factual information. Anyway, Luke, he is not 29. Ah, some things don't change. First guess is wrong. Imagine my shock. Well, Ted, our second guess, guess comes from Sam in Nottingham. Oh, here we go. The rhyming's back. Yes, again, as I said, Ted, coincidence. Anyway, sorry, Sam, he isn't 27. So, Ted, what are you guessing then? Well, it's the same old shit every week, really. If I go old, he's young. If I go young, he's old. So I'll go somewhere in the middle. 26. Well, Ted, let's see. So when this photo of Ruben Buriani was taken, he was 25 years old, not 26, 25. Really, that's amazing. No, Ted, you, you got it wrong. I know, but on my menu for the local Indian, number 25 is Ruben Buriani. Whatever, Ted, see you next week. So, episode 48, people, draws to a close. Another step closer to the big 50 episodes. I cannot believe we've come this far. Thank you so much, people. Thank you so, so much. Uh, as always, if you are new to tuning in and you enjoyed what you saw, please hit subscribe down below. Don't forget to ring the little bell because then you won't miss another episode. Please give us some of those. Please, 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 please. Baldy head, ego, remember that? Massages both. So please do that. Uh, but for now, though, as always, we are done. So it is ding ding. Next stop, Saturday, the 24th of July for what will be episode 49. Now, let's try not to balls that are spit up this weekend, shall we? So for now, as Reedy always says, everybody stay safe, people. <laughs>